<laughs> what made him unique was the dexterity. He was, he's really got one pre predecessor, Cooper, and that was W.C. Fields. Fields was, a, of course, a brilliantly accomplished juggler, but on stage he would literally throw it all away. And once it started going wrong, the audience was in on it, uh, which is always the great secret, I think, of a, f of a focused performance on stage. Just, the, the, the audience will only love uh, a performer who lets them in. It's, uh, that's why you can, a juggler can come on and juggle seven things, including the kitchen sink, and they won't love him. And I think one of the reasons that people found him so amazing was you'd never seen a conjurer, a magician, who wasn't little and dapper and neat, who hadn't got small, clever hands and cunning little ways, pretending to be drunk, or pretending to be sophisticated, or pretending to be something that enabled them to put over their magic. And suddenly, by definition, here was a man totally incapable of performing any magic, with hands like big bunches of bananas and great big clot-hopping clot steps, although they were curiously graceful. But nevertheless, you thought this man can't possibly do any tricks. And when it turned out he was getting them wrong, the joke became the fact that you were, you were watching him at all. Clock disappear from the box. So pull the hatch out behind a one. In destroying the magic, he elevated it. If he just stayed doing magic, the world would have missed a great clown. And this great clown showed another way of looking at his art form. And his art form was magic. Magic is an art form. But Tommy, by poking fun at it, but never nastily. There's a trend sometimes to poke fun nastily. He was never nasty. He always tried to do it, and occasionally succeeded, much to his surprise. He, um, he made audiences aware that magic could be enjoyed, and therefore he elevated it. gave me a piece of advice once. When you're, when you're doing something physical, uh, don't practice it in front of a mirror. Now, I surprised, that surprised me, because I've always thought if you're doing something physical, practice it in front of a mirror. But Tommy's advice, I think, was based, from the best that I can recall, is that if you work in front of a mirror, you become engrossed with yourself. Whereas if you work to an imaginary audience, to a blank wall, when you're doing your business, you're constantly aware of the fact you're doing it with the spectator. And I believe that was one of his secrets. I never saw Tommy perform or do any kind of business where he wasn't totally involved with reaching you, reaching out to you. Never, never involved with self-admiration or look at me, look at me. It was always, here, this is for you. he took me around London, uh, round to all the joke shops. And of course, when I walked in with Tom and uh, they said, hello, Tom, I've got, a, I've got a good one for you. 
how do you like this? It's, it's a nail through the finger. Like, oh, no, I don't like that. But how do you like the axe? The, and they always used to give him tricks, or show him little novelties, and he might say, no, I don't fancy that. I'll, uh, I'll see you anyway, Jack. Bye. And bye, Tom. See you around and go to another one. So all these little things he had uh, that were funny tricks, like he might have an axe in his head, and he used to come on and say, oh, I have a, a shocking headache. <laughs> I've got a sore head. <laughs> Or wearing glasses. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you go to the cinema and people behind you keep talking, cap, 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 like that, and you can't listen to the film, with this, you can. See, so you put it on like that, look. <laughs> See? And you can listen to the film. And if you don't like the film, you can listen to the conversation. But his joy was to amaze and delight people, like a child just like a child. I don't think he ever grew up, that part of him. What other grown man in his 60s would go around with a tea bag so that he could stuff it into a taxi driver's top pocket as if it were a note? He'd hear the paper crinkling, I have something, have a drink on me, have a drink on me. Later, the fellow, thinking it was going to be a five pound note, would discover the tea bag. It was enough for Tommy that he would discover that later. He didn't have to be there to see the man's astonishment. It was a, it was a joke. And it was a kind of joke you'd buy from a joke shop. And that's the kind that Tommy loved. Oh, this could drive me sane. <laughs> this would be handed down to me by my great grandfather, a genuine, genuine milkwood stool. It is genuine. Look, I'll show you. Look, look, look. He asked me what I wanted for my 60th birthday, and I said I'd like to go on the Concord to New York. He said, so would I. So we uh, went on the Concord to New York, and as we were getting off, he said it was a great, but he said it was like travelling in a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm going up the magic shop in Sh Times Square. You go to the hotel. So off he went to the magic shop, and I went to the hotel. Well, I unpacked and I, I fell asleep because of the time change, and one thing and another. And when I woke up, there was no Tommy. It's not my night, is it? <laughs> he couldn't remember where he was staying, so he phoned home to find out where he was staying. And as it happened, he went into a, ho a Fortis hotel, and it was their security man that brought him back. It's a famous trick, down the bottle of glass. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a ball of ball without two split the glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My father had a pub, and my father went away for the, he had a pub. He was baker by trade, but he had a pub in uh, South Wales, in Caldeon, in near Newport. And uh, he he wanted to go away on holiday, so I decided to work behind the bar. And there was a fez that somebody brought in, so I put it on and I looked in the mirror. And Tommy Cooper was then, be he was quite big then, the early 70s this was. But I, I so I used to stand up there and do Tommy Cooper. Uh, and by the time I, I came back, you know, we, I used to have a floor show there. I used to do Tommy Cooper in the bar. And uh, that's my first, I just remember that. I, that's my first time I've ever performed as Tommy Cooper behind the bar, serving in the bar. I had a lot of fun. I got a lot of laughs on that. Sometimes didn't like people laughing at him. I went in the golf club at uh, Sudbury one day, and he just said to the barman, "We played a bit, a bit of golf, and it had been great—not golf, just a wonderful morning, having a walk." And uh, he went, "I'll have a gin and tonic." And the fellow went, "Ha ha ha!" He went, "What are you laughing at? Don't you laugh at me?" I said, "So I said, me well, loves you. I bloody love him, laughing at me." Did somebody else come on? <laughs> I think he was an innocent, innocent of the fact that he was hysterical. I don't think he knew it. I, I don't think he knew it. I mean, when I used to watch him on the stage, I could see him 
going to this routine, but the laughter seemed unexpected to him. You know, he didn't seem to expect it. Mind you, he knew it was there, but he seemed joy. See, his ability to wait on the stage and do nothing between tricks. Oh. <laughs> I always use Tommy Cooper when I'm working on set in a film because people get very uptight and serious about their work. And so I break it up by doing Tommy Cooper with jokes, especially in the first few days. I bore everyone silly. I repeat the same old jokes, but it's always, it's always good for a laugh to break the tension, you know, because people get so, you know, po-faced about it all. I was working with James Ivory on, uh, was it? Oh, uh, Remains of the Day, and the uh, first few days, that's all I did with Tommy Cooper jokes, and uh, making the crew laugh, and James Ever said, I, I don't know what's so funny, who is this Tommy Cooper, you know? <laughs> he couldn't get the joke. <laughs> I wish sometimes I hadn't you know, become, a, you know, I've been dubbed as a very serious actor and all that, but I'm not like that in myself. I, I, I do envy comedians, I think they are the greatest. I'll ask poor York, I knew him well. He went to a dance the other night. So all by himself in the corner. He's got nobody to dance with. <laughs> Recently, I played Uncle Vanya. It was a, a, a production I did with... I, I directed myself... Uh, it was uh, August. It was called August. It was set in Wales. And there's a scene at the beginning with Astrov, and uh, I start laughing about the professor. So I start putting these laughs in. In the, in the middle of the scene, describing the professor's pomposity. And uh, it just happened one night by accident. And, <laughs> and I think the audience picked up on one part of it because I started laughing like Tommy Cooper. And I thought, I better not go too far because I'll step outside the play and it'll make the other actors start laughing too much. So I thought, I better not go too far. But I was tempted to. I wish I had, actually. Oh, 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 I feel you. I like to steal you. Your heart's away. And more to me than Delia, as sweet Cecilia has had a day. Oh, 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 Petelia, I think you're really a, so very sweet. What a sack of Melia, a jelly Elia, that I could eat, dance. <laughs> Oh, please reveal you in love with me. You had such a failure. That's why I'm nearly on bending knee. Tommy would take a routine that others had done before. Uh, he used to do things like uh, the hat twist. It was an old magician's prop. It was a felt disc. And in fact, it was a Frenchman called Truy. He used to do this and twist hat shapes out of it. And I guess in its time, um, I've seen it performed as a quite serious piece. But Cooper was hysterical. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> I slipped that in, didn't I? Yes. I said, are you serious? I said, yes. I said, of course I am. I said, <laughs> I said because, you know, one can overdo it, you know what I mean? You can take the things too far. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a joke's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Once Tommy knew that hats were funny, once that had been demonstrated, he relentlessly went down that course and produced everywhere he went. I think he bought a hat. If he saw a hat in a shop, it would be funny. Hat's funny. So he'd buy it. And it went in the act higgledy-piggledy, whether it was funny or not, until it was funny. It was <coughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve at Joe's pub. A happy mob was there. The bars and tables were crowded. Lots of noise filled the air. In the middle of all this gaiety, the door banged open wide. 
A torn and tattered tramp walked in. Happy New Year, folks, he cried. <laughs> the crowd just looked at him and laughed and some began to jeer. But a sailor standing at the bar said, Ship ahoy, mate, have a beer. <laughs> I thank you, son, the tramp replied. But beer and me are through. I never touch a drop again, but I'll split a bottle of rum with you. So up jumped the bank manager, who happened to be there. <laughs> Throw that tramp out, he cried. He contaminates the air. <sighs> Them's harsh words, friend, the sailor said. The banker said, so what? <laughs> Them shooting words, the cowboy said. Are you aiming to be shot? <laughs> New Year's Eve and Joe's Pub, I have to know. New Year's Eve and Joe's Pub. My goodness, it's Sam, she cried with fright, and her face went white. <laughs> Who's there before I'm afraid? <laughs> the tramp! Where's the tramp? <laughs> Put it a knife, as I and Sammy cried, and that painted woman once tore herself, my wife. <laughs> Don't stop him, Pod! <laughs> Cowboy's head. <laughs> Grab a knife, soldier cried. <laughs> the farmer hit the tramp, so that painted woman is my promised bride. Nuts! Don't make me laugh! No, don't make me laugh. <laughs> the tramp replied, You cannot win that horse? Why not, said the fireman? The tramp replied, We never were divorced. <laughs> it's a lie, the woman shouted! <laughs> it's the truth the tramp yelled out. Take it easy, said the sailor. <laughs> I better get a bigger box. I can't find a thing. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> Who was I up to? <laughs> Tell me, I'm going to be here all night. Who was it? <laughs> the sailor. <laughs> Hold everything, said the sailor. Thanks very much. <laughs> what the heck's it all about? Who are you? Yes, who are you? <laughs> The money the beggar said. <laughs> the cowboy said, Shut up! <laughs> the soldier said, Take it easy, boys. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> you can pad us a bit, you're a padder. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> I'm gonna cut my head up and just pad it or something. <laughs> you can cut your head wide up with that. <laughs> and the farmer said, I'll kill that pup. Oh! Ah! A tough guy, said a pilot. <laughs> he was sent to the bar. <laughs> the cowboy hit the farmer, and the farmer hit the floor. He got up straight away, looked, looked at the woman, and said, I was a mug for you to fall. And then he hit her. My gosh, she screamed. Ah. <laughs> and then the fight was free for all. In Mr. Frenchman. <laughs> a little schoolboy. I don't know who that is. <laughs> then all of a sudden, they heard a policeman's whistle. They heard a policeman's whistle. They heard a policeman's whistle. It ain't marvellous, eh? <laughs> That's all he had to do. <laughs> and he's wearing makeup as well. <laughs> <laughs> and a policeman came in and pissed the whole damn bunch. Come on, <laughs> thank you.
empty box. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's dark in there. <laughs> All right, Jack. Timing is always utterly instinctive. But once he's got the timing right, that's the way it's going to stay. And certainly pieces of business that I loved, showing you that something was solid, the magic cabinet. <laughs> that, that timing on that was always impeccable, always the same. Empty! 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 It always looked as if it had happened for the first time. Of course, that was his secret. He always made you think, even though you were waiting for him to do a trick, and when he got around to the bottles and the glasses, it still looks as if it was the first time he'd ever done it, and it could go wrong. And it did go wrong. And you knew it would go wrong, but you thought maybe he didn't know how to make it go wrong, but he did. All thought out. It was something he used to spend about half an hour in his dressing room, arranging all his tricks, and, and so that they were all there. So if he'd walk up to the tent and go, um, um, and then he put it down and walked away and do something else. A lot of that was, was worked out. He's just a very, very funny man. But I believe, totally aware of what he was doing to make it funny. He had a quick uh, uh, brain, too. You know, he came to my office. I had about uh, eight or nine of people in the office. And the door opened and Tom walked in. And of course, everybody said, hello, Tom, how are you? Hello, there, how are you? And Tom had that time, he had a, a, an overcoat on, which was, it must have been worth a fortune. It was beautiful crombie, but, you know, tailored and everything. So I helped him off with it, he's telling a story. So I said, go on, Tom. And I held it up like that and dropped it on the floor, you see, at my office. So, so Tom went on telling the story, he looked at it, and uh, he said, of course, I got this. And he picked it up, and he was brushing it down, all the time he was talking and getting laughs. And I caught the payoff like that and they all laughed and it just said, that's funny, isn't it? And he dropped the coat, just where I dropped it. And then went up to have a drink. And this is the wit of the man. The sea's getting up, bosun. It's a bit late this morning, sir. <laughs> I've got a feeling this whole operation is coming apart. Uh, what do you mean, sir? What do I mean? <laughs> oh, uh, I'll get it fixed. I'll get it fixed. OK. Right. Yeah, Bosun, Bosun, take the wheel. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Bosun. Bosun! Bosun! Yes, sir. Bosun, for goodness sake. What a funny piece of bit of lighthouse. <laughs> I'll have a word with the two <laughs> Hello? Sorry, sorry! <laughs> Wrong number. It's easily done. <laughs> In 1964, I, I did my first Royal Command, and um, he stole the show this night, this particular night. He was wonderful. I, I can see him now. He walked on with an old um, heater, one of those old tin heaters. And they just told me, they said, go out there and warm him up. 
Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Oh, dear. I'm wearing my tails tonight. Do you like them? <laughs> he was the first one to do the gag. He said, uh, I've brought the wife, he said. And I said, how much is a ticket? They said, it's £100. I said, how much is a programme? They said, £6. He said, give us a programme, she can sit on that. Well, I mean, you know, roar in again. <laughs> Now, would you just hold the tray like that, sir? No, I, I took it, I turned around here like that. Uh, yeah, I turned it around like that, sir. For food! <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir, thank you very much. Just hold it, just, 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 just hold the tray down there, sir. Just down there like that, sir. I'll say, sir. Hold it there like that, sir. Fu! <laughs> How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you never know it is. You never know, she might. Or she might not, but she might, you never know, you see. I was next to him in the lineup, and people have told this joke, but it is true. There was Scylla, Brenda Lee, the American girl, myself, and Tommy. That was as the Queen came round the corner. And, you know, I mean, you're going to meet the Queen of England. Wonderful. I'd only seen a close up on a stamp. And there he was, and she went, you were wonderful tonight, Tommy, so funny. And he went, oh, thank you. Did you laugh? And she went, oh, yes. We all laughed. And she's looking at her entourage, she went, all that. He said, was I funny? Oh, she said, yes, terribly funny. He said, so you laughed then? And then she, she went, yes, yes, I laughed. Oh, he said, good. Could I ask you something personal? Well, Bernard Delfont, who didn't have the knighthood in those days, and th then the Lord, he stiffened. The, the equerry who's gone ahead stiffened and everyone's gone. I even have, I haven't shook hand yet, so I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's all going to end here. No, and she went, as personal as I'll allow. He said, do you like football? So she went, not particularly. He said, could I have your tickets for the cup final? Well, I mean, she roared. She giggled and l laughed. Oh, man. And I got a picture at home of me shaking hands and everyone's laughing. It was wonderful. The drawing by Heath Robinson was very much like Tommy Cooper. And I thought, I thought I'd like to take my chance and make a tribute to him because of this drawing, yes. I'm a goblin Tommy Cooper. I can do tricks with a hat. I can walk upside down with a barrow, so they've made me a water rat. I can juggle with 70 skittles, dive through a rubber Tire, I can sleep on the bottom of the channel. Did somebody call me a liar? I'm a goblin Tommy Cooper. I fly around the room on a mat. You ask me how I do it, I'll tell you just like that. No tractors! Arsha <laughs> Hollow! <laughs> gag 
was where he could pro produce things from anywhere. And he had this cloak around him, and everything was produced from between his legs. You see, and he pulled up, you know, a milk, ch a milk uh, churn, all daft things, you know. And the last piece was to be a ladder. And as you pull the, he pulled the ladder, it just went bigger and bigger up from under his head. I came through and said, I can't pass anything else to you, you fool. And that was the end of it. So he did the dress run, and then we came to do the show, and he was doing, doing very, very well. And I've heard people say I knew he died. All I can tell you on that evening, the girl came along, wrapped the cloak around him and fastened it. And she looked and laughed, because he went, ah. And he sank down on his haunches. Now, I was watching on, on the monitor because I was doing the last gag with him. And I thought he hasn't rehearsed this bit. And it looked as though, he, he, for want of a better word, he was going to do a, some form of levitation joke because he had this huge cloak around him. And he just sank down there, there. And we watched for a minute. And the audience were roaring, laughing. There was no silence or gasp. And then the producer went, Play the music. And they played, brought the music in, Alan Ainsworth, and they called in the commercial break, and they put the curtain around him. And he was there for a while, and Peter Pritchard, my manager, was one of the first on the scene. He's St. John's man and tried to give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And terrible, he was announced dead on arrival at hospital. and. It, 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 for a man that I admired so much, um, for him to die in harness uh, and, and on my show, I mean, it, 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 well, it just shattered me. Because I loved him. He was, uh, I got a bit sad now thinking about it. I mean, he was, I had such good laughs with him, and to see the life leave him was very, very sad. Well, I, he wanted me to watch the show on the television in the lounge, which I did. And when he collapsed, I knew that something had happened. And then a newspaper man phoned through and told me. And I put the phone down, and the next thing I know, my son came home. Funny enough, he did something that we never do in our business. He rang me up during the day, and he said, I want you to catch you tonight. And I thought it was strange, but he said, there's a couple of things in there I think you like. But uh, then he fell over, and uh, straight away, I was asked for to set off. I said, you know, I, I, I just knew he was dead. And then he, on hindsight, I looked back, and I thought, well, he... Nobody's ever, nobody phones up another comic and say, get this tonight, because uh, you don't know how good you're going to be. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know where, but I know we'll meet again, Sunny. Just like you, always you, until the blue sky, bright grey sky, far away. Yes. I should never forget the first time we met. She was sitting on top Waterloo Bridge dangling her feet in the wall. <laughs> she cocked one eye at me. <laughs> and I cocked one eye at her. <laughs> and there we stood together, copper. <laughs> I've no idea why I didn't attend his funeral. Perhaps I didn't want to. Yes, that's it, I didn't want to. And why didn't you want to? Was, I didn't want to. I want to remember him alive. I wanted, I wanted that incredible man on the stage. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Rose, Rose, I've risen. <laughs> I didn't work it at all. Look, see that glove? Second hand. <laughs> <laughs> I backed your horse today, 20 to 1. Give me 20 past 4. <laughs> he was so late coming in, he had a tiptoe back to the stable. <laughs> And the jockey kept hitting like that with a whip. Not, not, not like that, like that. <laughs> Tommy was a huge man, but had an extraordinary grace about him, an extraordinary beauty of movement. His little steps this way and that way, his hand movements. Uh, a delicacy was there, a grace, and that was a, a grace note on all the comedy that he offered us. But he did say to me one time, he said, people say, I've only got to walk onto a stage, and they laugh. And he said, if only they knew what it took me just to walk onto that stage. And, and I said, whatever you do, Tom, don't try to analyze it. Just thank God that he gave you that gift. He's miraculous, really. He was more than funny. He was miraculous. He was miraculously funny. Tissue, tissue, all fall down. <laughs> Come on! I'm chic. A vet, Remy. Your love belongs to me. At night, when you sleep, into your tent I'll creep. The stars will shine above. Will I away to love? You rule this land. With me, a sheet of ruby. <laughs> there's good comics, and there's poor comics, and there's comics you think, yeah, he's pretty good, he does okay, you know, he's a good workman, but he was a great, great comedian. And uh, all as I know, uh, Fish, that uh, if it was tonight, I'd grab Parky, you, me, and a few of the others, and I'd say, come on, we'll go and watch Tommy Cooper. And you know, you'd come out laughing, saying he's daft. It's stupid, but you'd be crying with these stupid things that he did. But they were so very, very funny. He won't be replaced, that one. I don't think so. I don't think he'll be replaced. I don't see anybody on the horizon coming up, you know. I see a few who work a bit like him. But, yeah, that was one off the mould that has just gone being broken up and will not be replaced, unfortunately. But I know we'll meet. Again, some sunny 